Hey guys, hope you're all doing okay. So today I'm gonna show you how to play God of War Ragnarok on your PC. Say what? Just kidding. Hopefully we see that soon. Actually, I want to discuss how and when PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X may come out. You might have seen something like this, I imagine, and these videos are all straight up lies like PS5 emulator on Android seriously. Needless to say, all the emulators that claim to be for PS5 and Xbox Series X are fake. I've been analyzing those for emulators for about 12 years now and these emulators include but are not limited to EPSX, EPCSX2, RPCS3, Xenia, Ryujin, Suzu, Simu, NES, Game Boy, and Neo Geo emulators. Within that time span, I've seen emulators go from just a bunch of lines of code to these Goliath UI enabled experiences that are capable of running titles with the utmost efficiency. PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 had way too different architectures than a normal PC. The reason is because the consoles are only designed to execute titles and nothing else um, except for media play and distro booting. So to do that, they have to do a little bit of trickery with how the code of the game is handled. This design contradicts with the basic PC designs, but the advantage of this type of design is that the console cost can be way more affordable. That's why if we look up specifications of a console, they don't say 8 gigs of memory. They say this many instructions per cycle, or this many gigaflops or teraflops. Because if they say um, the memory capacity, that would be a comparison of apples to oranges. The developers have just one hardware to work with and they can understand the architecture of the console to optimize the games. In case of PC, we are talking different x86, x64 architectures, hardware modules, graphic frameworks, and that's why console is feasible in some crucial aspects. But in recent years, thanks to the competition within the companies, reduction in price and improvement in chipsets, um, these all have led to console manufacturers that are making consoles that have similar guts uh, to, to that of a PC because at this point it's just feasible to make a, an architecture that's similar to PC rather than designing a whole new architecture from scratch also consoles are comparing and competing in the gaming segment with PCs now for example handheld consoles or the standard ones are now required to have HDR support um, ray tracing 4k 8k with higher FPS along with higher refresh rate a couple of years ago these weren't needed PS5 and Xbox One Series X use AMD chipsets. I cannot stress how good is this for emulation community. This means that we can see emulators for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X within a year or two, theoretically. That brings me to my next point, the emulation scene. It's easier said than done. Designing a new emulator requires so much work. First, we need the schematics of the architecture so we can try to emulate the basic framework of PS5 or Xbox Series X. It's basically reverse engineering to a degree to see how every module communicates with every other module. After that, we have to emulate the GPU. These are the one of the toughest aspects of designing any emulator because of the AMD chipsets, which provides a PC-like architecture. This time, it's comparatively easy. But that's not all. Every game is coded differently. They use the same resources but in way different ways. That's the reason why only a few titles seem to work when in the beginning stage of an emulator and then developers phase out bugs and of other titles and then make them on playable on emulator as well. They also need build testers and specialists to take various test implementations. Next up is how much time and dedication are they willing to assign to the emulation project? We have several emulators which have pretty fast build revisions and some which are extremely slow to update. They also need a budget and funding to afford the hardware and tools to develop the emulator on. And the only ways they can do that is by doing early access builds, technological support and Patreon support which are not always enough especially not in the beginning. Considering all these factors, it's a massive undertaking and commitment to the community. Okay, so to answer the question, when will it be available? The answer is, it depends. Suppose an emulation picks up the, uh, this project full time and then we can have a prototype to a basic framework booting emulator within a year or somewhat capable emulator within two years that should be able to play some um, capable games. However, if an emulation scene picks up the project part-time or casual only, then it's a different story. 
We might get a prototype emulator or basic emulator within two to two and a half years with a capable emulator uh, within three to four years. And if it seems way too long, just imagine this. PlayStation 4 came out in 2013. We now have an experimental emulator called Orbital which can boot some very lightweight titles after 7 years. It's because the developer team don't have enough resources or if they do they don't have the desired resources they might need. In addition PS4 hardware is very tricky to implement. If somehow they could dedicate a majority of their time and had the necessary budget they would improve the emulator like 100 times literally. You might be wondering what if none of the scenes are interested in picking up the PS5 or Xbox Series X project. Um, I don't think we need to worry about that because it might take time for a team to develop this project if they're interested or they have the necessary resources but it will happen. So to sum it all up the emulator needs and it depends on emulation scene, schematics, funding, commitment and support. Because these console architecture has become really similar to a PC, it's relatively easier this time. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this perspective. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.